Right here in my hand, I've got Chondrus crispus, a type of sea moss that grows abundantly along the rocky coast of the Atlantic in Europe and North America. Now you'll find this is quite different from sea moss you'll find growing in warmer waters of the Caribbean, Africa, and South America. Each type has its own unique properties and benefits, but today we're gonna focus on the cold water variety. Now if you go back seven to eight years, sea moss was the thing. It skyrocketed in popularity largely thanks to Dr. Sabi and Left Eye. May they both rest in power. But they were huge advocates of sea moss and they weren't shy about sharing how it's changed their lives. And to be real, it's changed mine too. The sea moss hype has definitely cooled down and I think a big reason for that was the market becoming oversaturated along with the ongoing debate between wildcrafted and pool farm sea moss. For people new to sea moss, it became overwhelming and even stressful to figure out what's authentic and what's not. The influx of lower quality farm sea moss flooded the market and suddenly people had to navigate through the confusion to figure out what's truly beneficial and what's just mass produced. There were people encouraging to take it daily back then and I could never get down with that. With sea moss being as powerful as it is, I shouldn't have to. Even today, I rely on it as a supplement and not an everyday necessity. I only make the gel once every six months and it's been a while since my last batch. It's getting a little dark so we're gonna head home to make some today and I'll explain a little more why I eased off a bit. Before I turn this into a gel, I need to prepare it. I'm gonna start by rinsing it thoroughly with some distilled water and key limes. You only need about one third cup of sea moss. It doesn't look like much, but it expands by a lot. One thing I love about Chondrus crispus is that it's actually easier to clean compared to the sea moss varieties from warmer waters like the Caribbean. It usually has less sand and ocean debris, making the cleaning process a lot quicker. You see how it's already expanded? It looks very clean, still feels a little rough. I'm gonna dump this water out, rinse it off a bit, and give it some fresh water to allow it to soak. Some more lime juice. I'm gonna soak this for four to six hours until it expands a little more and becomes more soft. Now I'm ready to go. I have the high speed blender with vacuum functionality from our sponsor, Kuvings USA, which is perfect for the job as it will help remove those air pockets from the CMOS gel. They offer many high quality juicers and blenders for your health needs. You can use code Brandon to save 10% at checkout. To add on why I don't use CMOS as frequently, well, with the state of our oceans today, the issue of contamination should be considered. Sea moss grows in the ocean, therefore it is possible it can sometimes absorb heavy metals, pollutants, or even microplastics. That's why you've got to know your source. Make sure you're not ingesting sea moss that's been harvested from questionable places. Now let's talk about iodine for a moment because sea moss is loaded with it, which can be great for thyroid health. Iodine plays a crucial role in keeping your thyroid functioning properly but like anything, balance is key. If you're deficient in iodine, you might start experiencing symptoms like headaches, fatigue, or even nausea. But those same symptoms can occur if you have too much iodine. Overloading your system with iodine, even from natural sources like sea moss, can do more harm than good, especially when it comes to your thyroid. That's one of the main reasons I don't consume sea moss every day. It's all about moderation and making sure you're getting the right amount without overdoing it. Have my glass container to store it in. Place it in the fridge. Uh, so many different ways that you can use it. You have up to 21 days. Some people even stretch it out to 30, but I prefer to do 21. At the end of the day, I'm still a fan of sea moss. It has its place in my routine, but I'll never let the hype push me into overdoing it. Like I said, I use it once every six months and use it sparingly as a supplement, but everyone's different. Your body, your needs, it all matters. Until next time, peace, God.